product design. I think product design is a very responsible and, and powerful discipline that creates the way that human coexists. Because we have products all around us and this interferes with our self-beings, with our personalities and the way we look at things and the way we deal with it. Since very young, I always had access to hardware tools and, and to materials. And we also had a lot of broken appliances and I had the opportunity to, to open them. It was a, curi a curiosity that I had. I, rem I recall one time, the first time I opened an alarm clock, I saw so many pieces inside, so many tiny pieces. I just realized, how is this possible? Like, all the pieces together can make something work. And I think it was from that moment that I aroused my curiosity in to understand a little bit more how things around me could, uh, could work, the, the minor details, the smallest components, how was it possible for everything combined to, to, to give functionality in, into something. I also remember uh, my father, he gave me a, a really good education in terms of uh, hand working and, and, and crafts. And I remember I, I was always helping him creating things that could be useful in our daily lives. So anything that we needed to, to be done, we, he was the one uh, doing it, but he always made sure that I was with him, uh, just handling the tools and providing them with all the assistance uh, he needed. So I think from that education that he gave me, uh, I think in an, in an unconscious way, uh, provided me the, the right steps for me to move forward into product design. I have a lot of references, but I think one designer that really uh, moved me, uh, it's, it's Raymond Louis. Because uh, Raymond Louis, he, he changed the paradigm of, of design from the 30s to the 70s. So everything back then was strictly functional and he was the one in charge of giving the aesthetics and the design part into the functionality and the other thing he had that vision very very clear and he had a strong determination and that led him to work in several areas not only in a specific area but he has a wide range of areas that he worked with and he put his, his fingerprints so for me I think he's, he's an inspiration for me because he he does he did not only focus on one aspect of design, like only the aesthetics, he focused on the, the functionality as well, and not only in one area, but we, we can see a very big uh, fingerprint of Raymond Louis. So this, maybe this is why he's, he's very important for me and he's such an inspiration. But of course, I also have other um, Designers, most most of them Italian, like Gio Ponti, uh, Marco Zanuso, Cassidioni. Um, I think in each of them, I have a very small component of aesthetics and of history, and combine everything. I just create my personality as as a designer, so I can develop my my own pieces. I think inspiration comes from from everywhere. Uh, it's on a daily basis. I'm, I'm, I'm very observant and in any environment I, I am, I always uh, look around and, and, and there is always something that catches my eye. It can be like color palettes, uh, shapes, proportions, uh, the combination of materials because you know when, when you are surrounded by a lot of information um, it's good when you look at something and you like it and you keep it for you because this builds your personality, this builds your own vision of things and, and how do you want to transpose those, those, those feelings into, into, into something. Um, also, I do find a lot of inspiration in people because uh, knowing people, understanding their culture, their background, it's something that it's good for you to understand what is their roots? Why do they think this way? And, and if you can understand their vision, if, and if they can complement your vision, I think it's a good synergy. I work with a, a range of, 
quite a big range of, of materials. Um, I think I can give an, an example foams and fabrics uh, to create upholstery pieces. For me, it's, it's very challenging and I do really like it because those two materials, when you combine them, you have to create the aesthetic part. You have to balance the aesthetic part with the comfort. So this makes uh, those materials um, challenging to work with because you need to balance those things. Um, and also, I think that uh, upholstery techniques, um, we still have a lot to do the market of course the market is crowded it's you can see a lot of different things beautiful things and but in a way there is still so much to do and I do think those two materials are, are two uh, perfect combinations in terms of when you, when you put it in a, in a piece other material I really like and I do use a lot it's brass metal okay there is um, I think there is a misconception that Metal, it's a hard material, but by being hard doesn't mean it's not difficult. Actually, it's very difficult to work with. So, if you work with brass, brass has a lot of um, particular mechanical properties. So, it's it's a softer material, a softer metal, so it's very easy for you to mold. It's very applicable in like, several processes, and when it comes to finishings, and weldings, it's a very complex material to work with, so it requires a lot of expertise. And I think this kind of expertise that I can learn from the craftsmen, it's also a thing that really thrives me to to know more about this uh, this material.